Hey everyone, this is Wade from FishFinderMounts.com and I want to show you guys some more aspects of our 20 amp hour system we are very soon to have on our website. We don't have it quite there yet because the units that we're dealing with are just first article units. We had a few of those that enabled us to build up these samples that you see here in front of us today. Um, there's two versions I have here. They look identical. Um, the difference is, is that one is going to be dedicated uh, this version or this variant here is dedicated to the actual live scope uh, product. So the live scope product has what you call a GLS 10 box. It's like an interpolation box where it'll actually take the signal and say or take t slave the the unit here. It's not on here right now, so the camera should probably back off here. I don't have a GLS 10 box with us, so um, I've shown it in other videos earlier on. Um, but it's essentially it looks like one of those amp, amplifier boxes that we you know you might have put in your car to drive a sub subwoofer in your car what have you it's it looks similar to that and uh, so anyways that can get actually put on our 20 amp hour kit it's actually got dedicated PEM mounting nuts implanted right into the the box here there's four of those that matches right up with the GLS 10 pattern. So you could mount it right to the side of the box. You could have your screen mounted like this and just have that going up and down. Of course, I got this upside down right now. You can just flip the screen around on its mounting bracket um, just by taking off these, these little knobs here and then just flipping the screen over. And so you could have it like this in your boat. How is it going to stand up? Well, we've got this fabulous quick release base that you can actually screw down right into your boat and if you want it vertical like this like I'm just showing you right now you can just take this guy um, there's a hole here that actually engages with our um, our quick release pin here so you can take this guy and there's these two notches here that made up with the grabbers right here the ledge grabbers right here on the quick release base so I'm going to show you guys how that works quickly. You'll also notice there's a faint line here, or there's a line that's here. It, it's actually to sort of guide you as, as long as the battery is parallel close to the battery box is close to that line. Everything is going to snap in nicely. You can see here again the way you engage it. One more time. I'll drop down the pin will engage. Oh. Yeah, the pin's engaged now, and it's on. You can also mount this quick release base this way as well. So again, here's some ledges on the end. And you just take this guy, and it's quick release pin is on this side here in this case, and now it's engaged. So if that was screwed down the boat, everything would be stuck onto that quick release base, not moving or what have you. So, what makes this uh, model here unique from this version here? What, what's the difference? Well, I'm going to just break that down for you guys. In our just conventional uh, fish finders, what you'll have, we can turn these on by the way guys, there's power to these SAE connectors. So we'll just take the, um, the Hummingbird power. Here's the power cable here, as an example, and I'll just connect it up quickly so you guys can see, hit power on, there's a 20 amp hour battery, that's why we're calling it a 20 amp hour, it's a 20 amp hour 12 volt battery, this is the charger, by the way, the charger's charged, the product is right here, you can see the green lights on, so we're going to disconnect the charger, so that's how you charge this. You charge it through the same port that you power your fish finder through. That is this SAE connector here, okay? So we're just going to take this charger. Uh, this is the charger we sell on our, well, one of the chargers we sell on our website. This will charge your system overnight, a good long overnight here. You should charge it up that way. We'll just connect that SAE connector, and then you can see we have the same SAE connector here. And we'll just plug this guy in, and on comes your Helix 7 DI GPS unit right here. Okay. So, 
now the, the thing that makes and I'll turn on the, the, the um, Garmin here as well. I've got this. This one's already been charged up, so I already had it connected here. So there you go. The Garmin's turning on. Now, I don't want the camera lens to get all too um, overexposed to this light from the screen. So we'll just flip these screens up. I want to draw the camera's attention to the power sections here. And let's take off this quick reuse base. It works for both models of course they're no different that way what is different is the power section part so here in this case what you have is a USB charging uh, socket and it also shows your voltage of the battery so the voltage the battery is holding 13 volts right now so it's it's uh, specced in a 12 volts 20 amp hours but yeah a 12 volt battery you can you'll charge typically past its its nominal voltage there so there's uh, your USB, two USB outlets for charging your phone or your laptop or whatever you may be, whatever you may wish. And then there's a cigarette lighter um, type port where you can plug in a small compressor to pump up your air bed in your tent or whatever you may want to do here. There's a 10 amp hour fuse in these. You cannot run any accessories like that that are going to pull more than 10 amp hours at any t or 10 amps at any time. So uh, that should be plenty for any kind of little accessory or whatever you want to run off here um, with a 20 amp hour battery being in here. 20 amp hours means it has 20 amp hours. It has that much capacity. So if you're running, if you're tr drawing an amp per hour, um, you're going to run it for 20 hours if, you're, if your device draws one amp um, over the hour <clears throat> worth of power I guess would be a way of thinking of it now so you have again once again you have your USB you have your cigarette lighter port you got your on and off switch this does not by the way affect the fish finder power cable part of it you can see the screen is still on right here the switch actually controls power to these two um, outlets here okay so now with your Garmin LiveScope product, what you're going to have is this configuration. I'll just tilt this guy up and you're going to have, now you can choose, and that's another thing I want to say. We do have another model I haven't put out here where you could just buy, it's going to be the base model where you won't have any of these connections at all. All you'll have is the SAE connector, so it'll just be a power supply for your fish finder only. That will be our base model, and I'm not showing that here. But so this is our sort of a premium, uh, this one here, once again, going back to this, this is like our premium version. This is like the, all the bells and whistles, this guy right here, you know, your cigarette lighter, your USB charging thing with the voltage display, all that. This is our premium model for LiveScope. Now what happens with LiveScope is there is actually two SAE power ports here, okay? So you're going to need to power your GLS 10 box, let's say it's mounted over here on this face of the power box here, and you're going to need to take a power cable out and plug it, you know, from the GLS 10 and plug it into here. So you're going to get a couple of these power cable sets from us so that you can make, you have the SAE plug for both components, your screen and the GLS 10. You will be able to turn off your GLS 10 box, which is actually really nice because in a lot of these situations with Garmin, you can't actually, in some of them, anyways, I'm not sure how rampant this is in terms of across their product lines and everything, but you actually will want to, like when the GLS 10 is on, what I understand at this point is that it takes over the uh, screen and kind of runs the screen and that's what you're looking at, uh, which is the live site uh, image. If you want to go back to your standard sonar, like your 2D traditional sonar, your down imaging, your side imaging sonar, well, you're going to need to turn the GLS 10 box signal off and let this unit go back into its standard mode like you see here. Um, and we'll just put this in, we'll put this in split frequency for fun right now. Uh, it says transistors will go into We'll go into simulation mode. We'll just turn that on. That's fine. And then what we'll do is we'll use the back out arrow 
and we'll put it on, uh, let's put it on this one here. So you could get this screen back up once you turn the GLS-10 on. So this power, what I'm saying, this power cable here, this power socket, this SAE socket here will be controlled by this switch. So there's power only when the switch is on. When the switch is off, you will not be able to run the GLS-10 because there will be no power to it. But essentially you'll have, you have two power outlets for your Garmin dedicated live site setup. And then you could, you're going to have the option to um, either put this USB and voltage display socket here in this place, or you, and, or you could choose none, that would be another option, okay, or you could choose instead the cigarette lighter uh, socket in that position. So we're going to give you the options to move, to have some of these different things, you don't have to actually Again, you won't be able to have both the cigarette lighter and the USB socket in the GLS or the uh, Garmin LiveSight version. You'll have to go one or the other. So you could go cigarette lighter here and you could actually buy some of these car accessory type ones where they plug in and gives you the USB charging ports. And then you still have the cigarette lighter type connection to both. Um, that's probably what I would do myself, but some people don't need it they just want to be able to charge their phone or what have you or their small devices and that looks really nice if you don't get the USB one though you won't have the voltage display reading the battery now I want you guys to note though that the fish finder is reading the voltage on the battery pack now this is in simulation mode so that that's this is showing 12.6 this is 12.8 volts but your fish finder will read the voltage of the, you'll be able to display what voltage is on the battery in here. So if, you, if you're using this as a fish finder mount, some guys could use this just as a sort of like a little redundant power supply for camping and different things as well. <clears throat> they might for one trip decide they don't want to bring a bigger graph, they don't need such a thing, but they still want this because they want to power some other devices, whatever it may be. So yeah, all I'm saying is I'm going long. The short of the long is that if you don't have the USB connector here, you won't have that voltage display. So you won't know what the battery is reading in terms of voltage. Once you hit 12 volts for a lot of devices, the thing's basically dead. You're not you're not going to run much with it or anything unless the, the device that you have runs under 12 volts. And I wouldn't recommend running the the battery down past 12 volts. Um, AGM and SLA batteries, they like to not be fully discharged. They'll last longer if you don't fully discharge them all the way. So um, this is Wade from FishMinerMounts.com just showing you guys um, the two models here, the difference between our Garmin LiveScope dedicated products where you have two SAE connectors built in and the our, our sort of conventional fish finder model for bigger graphs as well. You'll be able to run like a very large fish finder screen off of this for a good long day, like a good size 10 inch screen, good long day out on the water. And by the way guys, I wanted to mention, another option that you can do is this is actually our GLS-10 box. Um, we had a little uh, sub plate that we've made that's interfacing with a quick release base here. So this quick release base, you guys saw it actually interfacing with, you know, locking into the vertical or horizontal version of this 20 amp hour battery box. Well, you can also mount the GLS-10, I don't have it here again, um, but you can mount the GLS-10 onto here. You can see these mounting points here in this aluminum plate here, subplate. You put this, you load the aluminum subplate onto here, and then your, your GLS-10 will be screwed down to this and you could have this screwed somewhere separately in your boat. You don't actually have to have it, the camera moves away, you don't actually have to have your GLS-10 box mounted on this if you don't want. You can mount it separately on another quick release base. So we'll be selling this in our, on our accessories page where we sell our other quick release bases separately as well. So if you want to add a couple more to your package that you want to put together for your, your boat, your application, um, this guy here will also be in there I think. So we'll have all of this different, these different pieces and parts. Um, you'll be able to add multiples to your order if you, you want to have a modular setup where the battery boxes are, this battery box is somewhere with a screen. Your GLS-10 maybe is down further somewhere in the hull of your boat. 
wherever it may be. Maybe you want it in the, the cuddy of your boat, something like that. So um, again, you can screw these quick release bases down um, with all these mounting holes you see in it. All these mounting holes actually mesh with all of our products, um, like our, our clamps, all the holes meet up. These, these threaded holes meet up with these mounting holes here. You can put it on a Scotty glue-on plate, um, all sorts of different little applications and things. So once again, this is Wade from FishFinderMounts.com showing you the difference between our Garmin dedicated live scope 20 amp hour kit and our conventional FishFinder 20 amp hour FishFinder mounting kit. Everything you need to mount and power your large graphs, your large fish graphs. Thanks for watching everyone.